Sorry, I had to answer the door. I'm going to have a really nice core from all the bowing that I'm doing here in Japan. So, yeah, getting getting back to, oh, goldfish, man, my ADD kicks in. What was I talking about? Getting back to, oh, yeah, vehicles. Okay, so you have a title for, like, a U.S. car. You buy the car new, you get a title. Well, here in Mexico, you don't get a new title when you trade it in and or else or buy the vehicle in your name. They use basically the original sales invoice, the original factura. And so <clears throat> visualize it like you get the original title, and then when you sell the car to me, you sign off to me. I go to the state and get it stamped, and the state, state issues plates to my name. I sell it to somebody else a little bit farther down on the back of the factura, right? I sign off to the next person. So you keep that original dealership invoice right there. And so that's important to have. If you don't have the original dealership invoice, sometimes uh, you know you buy the car used, and whoever sells it, in that case, if it's a business or the issue of a factor in your name, they'll keep it. This seems complicated, and it is. The reason being that when you get total theft, uh, or you know, what would you call it, total total loss or theft insurance coverage for the Mexican vehicle, if you can't give the correct paperwork, that original factura, or if it's been uh, reissued the sequence, the insurance company will go, you don't have the correct paperwork, and they'll deny your claim for total loss or theft. Um, so yeah, that's that's a big thing. So get that paperwork checked, you know, because that paperwork is basically almost impossible to replace. Um, if you're buying a vehicle and the paperwork's messy, the originals are missing, stuff like that, we can still help you register the vehicle in your name, but, you know, just realize that, you know, you won't get paid out for complete loss or theft with the insurance company. And that brings up another thing. If you're coming to Mexico with your foreign plated car and you go, no, I just, I really got to get the tip. I got to get the temporary import permit. Or maybe your vehicle's uh, too new, right? It's a 2019 or, or newer and we can't assist you with the legalization of the vehicle. Uh, in that case, you need to be really careful because we had somebody contact us recently. <laughs> These poor people. And so they're from California and they had insurance by Qualitas, which is a, a major company here in Mexico. So they had Mexican insurance for a foreign vehicle, basically a tourist policy. But your tip, the information says you're supposed to maintain your um, registration back in your home state. So back in Canada in your province or back in the United States. So they're supposed to keep their California registration paid up. Well, they can't because of the smog and all that stuff, so they had to do the operating. So when they were in a serious accident, they went to go ahead and give the paperwork to Qualitas, and Qualitas says, your registration was expired at the time of this accident. We're denying your claim for like five or $6,000. And so they're just SOL, you know. It's, 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 it's in the contract. Not everybody's aware of it. Not all insurance companies are like that. So just be aware, and you know, that's another reason why if you legalize your vehicle, you know, or you import your vehicle, then it's Mexican, and then you don't have to worry about maintaining plates from back home. Some people, what they do is they'll get a state where you don't have to have, you know, like California, you have to have registration paid up, pardon me, your insurance paid up, stuff like that, other states. So they'll get plates from South Dakota or Montana or some place like that where they can just pay online and maintain the registration without any smog or have to take the vehicle back. So that's just some information. Like I said, big, big thing, you know, legalize it, legalize it, legalize or import it if you're going to bring a vehicle down because it's just easier. Once you get it down here, down the road, you know, maybe you want to sell it, then you can legally sell it if it's legalized or it's imported. You know, it's, it's a mess if it's not. You don't want to drive it back to the border. It's going to cost you money. You know, you drive it and sell it, you know, and then use part of that money to buy a worse car here. Because I'm going to be honest, you know, the cars here, here, Mexico, pretend I'm in Mexico, not Hapon. Uh, because the cars in, in Mexico, I mean, there is not a philosophy. There's not a preventative maintenance philosophy. It's fix it when it's broken. And, um, you know. They don't change the oil, so your engines don't last as long. And it's already terrible enough that they have people going 15,000 miles, you know, before they're supposed to do oil changes. You should be changing your oil if you watch my videos every 5,000 miles, every 3,000 miles. 
you know, 5,000 kilometers, at least for, you know, Puerto Vallarta area, stuff like that. So, you know, ask me how I know. I just had to replace an engine because I bought a car that they did not <laughs> change to some snowbirds, you know, or, you know, foreigners living down here and they just didn't service it or took it to crappy mechanics, a little bit of both. And so I had a mechanic rebuild the engine and he did a great job of rebuilding the engine, but apparently he forgot to clean like some of the little oil passages. So whenever I turned the air conditioning on and came to a stop, it would just die. <laughs> it was so, I mean, so frustrating, you know. And so finally I gave up and, you know, bought a used engine, had it imported from the States. And uh, and that was a whole nother fiasco because they're like, yes, this engine in it is from, you know, a, a shop that, you know, recommended this outfit with some caution. And, you know, I, I had them send the engine down and, and they go, we have a 40,000 mile engine. 60,000 or 80,000. I'm like, well, I want the 40. I want the one that's going to live, live the longest, right? And the uh, engine gets down here. Uh, you know, I have the Honda guys install it. And, you know, they go, oh, you know, here's some of the, the parts. They go, they go, we changed out the spark plugs because they're old. I look at the spark plugs. They're not the originals. Uh, they're all burnt up. They're radium and nice ones. So the in, the, the car didn't have 40,000. It probably had 140,000 miles on it. And I contact this outfit. And they're like, it's fine. Just change the oil. It's fine. I'm like, no, you sold me a 40,000 mile engine. And it obviously has more. Granted, it's a Honda, so it should go on. And it was quality spark plugs, but still. So, like I said, I mean, <laughs> these this is all stuff in the back of my head. Why people go like, I want to buy a car down here. I'm like, no, unless it's like a more recent vehicle with great maintenance, don't. You know, the older vehicles where you can buy the cheapies that are, you know, people say, gone are the long gone are the days of the 100,000 peso car. Although I will be selling pretty soon uh, a car that I had my my um, daughter learn to drive on, one of the little clown cars. And uh, it's basic, but I've gone through it, had everything done on it. <laughs> Because I like that. So anyways, I digress. Uh, this is going on too long. Thanks for watching Passplates PV. Send us a message if you have any questions. All right?